Um, my name is Javier Tapia. I'm a dentist from Madrid, from Spain. And uh, uh, I want to speak about the shade selection strategies that we have in the office. So uh, the shade selection, when we have a beta-based composite, normally should start with uh, the beta shade guide. So we can look at different areas of the tooth and we need to put this uh, in perspective with the edge of the patient. So looking at middle third, cervical third of the tooth and as well as the incisal third and identify the different shades. Then the idea when we don't have the Vita shade guide, we should uh, try to create our custom shade guide if possible to, in order to have uh, an idea of the combination Otherwise, we can always use a button technique so we can apply a little amount of, of composite in the surface and see if it matches the surrounding color. Polarized pictures can, can help a lot to see better the color of our restorations. Uh, but uh, sometimes, depending on the particle size, some materials maybe do tend to look a little bit darker than they will really will be at the end. So we need to keep always that in mind. And this usually happens a little bit with composite. So your composite will always be slightly brighter than it looks with the polarizer. Okay, so most of the, of the time uh, for predictable shade matching, I, I'm, I'm using some custom shade guides, but at the same time I use with, uh, combined with these materials like uh, Genial Universal Injectable and Genial Accord. Uh, and uh, we can create um, a lot of different shades and adapt a lot to different opacities, which is very flexible, and that's a key thing. You always need to keep in mind that uh, Vita Shade Guide is, is basically uh, a shade guide developed for metal ceramics, so you always have an opaquer, so the, it means that the opacity of the shade guide is quite high, so you cannot expect uh, out of the box the same color of any material because the translucency is higher. But having said that, it's very good to play and to understand that if you have really like a very opaque color and matching very well on the value to the shade guide, you should always use an opaque shade, for example, as a base. So it can give you this high value, high luminosity as a base, as a starting point. Things to avoid is uh, especially regarding uh, the age of the patient. So try to avoid using two translucent materials for uh, younger patients and use more of this translucent materials for elder patients because that's where most of the problems of, of shade matching coming from is the wrong luminosity of the restoration. Having a, a shade that can uh, blend in, in general, most composite materials, they exhibit this kind of behavior where it really fits different colors because it partially takes also the color from the substrate so it can blend easier and you have an optimal scattering. So that's the case, for example, with Accord. A few shades, you can cover a lot of the Vita shade guides already. And um, yeah, this is a very practical uh, thing to have in, into the composite, but always keep that in, in perspective together with the opacity and how much value you need to have in your restoration. Composites that uh, can match several shades, uh, like Genial Accord, uh, they have just the core shades covering the whole Vita shade guide can, can help to, to really um, simplify your, your methodology and having less materials to cover the whole thing. Um, we need to keep in mind that this kind of composites, they have a very good scattering and they can blend in with more shades and with the surrounding tooth structure, helping uh, to integrate with different kinds of, of shades. And if we put this together with the different opacities that we can have, then we can achieve the, the right value always of the restoration.